We're going to be joined by teams by political analyst Bongani Mashlangu. Bong Bongani, good afternoon. Thank you for your time with us here on the ACBC. Uh, no, greetings to you in studio and also um, greetings to the viewers at home. We've just um, heard the uh, package by Ndebo and I wonder on the back of that, at this point where protest is a right enshrined in our constitution, what your observations have been on how this constitutional right is being used by the public? Um, so I think we should give um, a broad overview with um, certain variables. First of all, I heard even one speaker, the last speaker there on the inset, um, spoke about a lot of things. But, you know, you can develop um, structures and systems, but those structures and systems require human capital in order to function. Um, and the human capital that is required now are the politicians and also the administrators. So if you then continuously have politicians and administrators that are not res responsible and are not um, responsive and use the SAP as, as a service delivery form of mechanism, Mechanism, then things don't change. So you need politicians that are responsible and responsive. That would then yield administrators that are responsible and responsive. We then also need frequent and meaningful engagement with our communities. And we have seen over the years that that hardly ever happens. I mean, even at local government, where most of these protests tend to take place, the only time there's that engagement is when there are IDP processes. But post that, there is no engagement or meaningful engagement or frequent engagement. You need to look at how do you even get these politicians and administrators into these positions of responsibility. So we look at attributes, education being one, leadership attributes, the ability to negotiate, to analyze, to synthesize, um, they do not have such attributes. Um, and also then you look at the selection or appointment criteria that are used by um, political parties. I mean, I know a lot of political parties, including the ruling party, would make someone a councillor just based on their ability to sing. And that person would then move on to chair a committee, a Section 79 committee, to become an MMC, to become even an executive mayor of a municipality without the necessary prerequisite um, in terms of attributes to lead such institutions. And that then yields to, uh, or that leads then to protest. Because if you look at most of our protests, they are service delivery protests, um, urban land use protests, housing protests, social economic protests, that's protests for employment, social um, um, social protection, social wages, access to healthcare, crime. If you look at where these protests take place, you find that in the main, they take place in urban areas or urban informal settlements. Why? Because of the high density in population there, the needs there and the ability to mobilize in such geographies and among such de demographies. So those are cities, those are small towns. You also look at the formation of these protests. You find that most of the time they are peaceful or they first start off as peaceful. They become confrontational, they become militant. And also what we have picked up over the years is that you now find organized um, protest groups, such as Operation Dudula, Soweto Parliament, they start off as organized protest groups, and at times they even morph to become political formations themselves. So if you, those, that is the broader picture that I wanted us to look at. So that is the determinants, not just the legal provisions that exist, for instance, in the Labor Relations Act, Section 77, or in the Constitution, Section 17, which give rights to certain particular groups of people to protest because for like section 77 we know that healthcare workers policemen or people in such services cannot protest but then every other employee or um, um, people under employee can protest so that are just provisions but these things can be mitigated over time if we had a responsible and a responsive government Bongani, that me, is by extension Yes, Bongari, let me yes. actually coming on that point. Thank you for that context. Um, whilst we focus on um, systemic and systematic change, um, I wanted to look at the role of protests, how it's played in South Africa's long journey towards democracy and uh, maturation. And when we look at um, dismantling the systemic and systematic um, change that um, is, is needed, what does the decolonization of, of the economy really mean? And how, given the issues reflected in the current political system, do we need to, what do we need to focus on to bring about that change? 
Um, so I will start here and just try to touch on all the elements you have raised in the question. So post-liberation democracy, the citizens of this country, in the main, um, your Africans or Blacks, have not actually enjoyed the dividend of living in a democratic society. So that leads to, or that means access to the economic wealth of this country. It's still highly concentrated. You have um, institutions such as the Competition Commission that have been formed but are grossly under-resourced. And it is these institutions or these instruments that must assist in ensuring greater access to the markets and greater access to the economy. We are not seeing that taking place. Yeah. We are still in an um, extractive economy where things are extracted out of the ground or from everywhere else and then those things are shipped in their raw form to extend to, to foreign markets for processing um, into final products that are sold back for our consumption that can be done those issues can be resolved there are even some policies for instance if you look into the performance agreement that was signed by the minister of finance um, in, in the witness of the minister's um, boss, which is the president. They talk about the formation of um, a bank, um, a state bank that should allow um, financial access to the majority of South Africans. But the minister has been dragging his feet in the execution of that indicator or that item in his performance agreement, but has been moving very quickly when it comes to fiscal consolidation or the implementation of um, um, austerity um, Bongani, measures. So when you Bongani, look just with the, with the interest of time, I know that there's, there's so much to unpack and, and thank you for those sentiments. At this point, we're looking at protest culture. I really wonder why it turns violent. How does the role of respect also come into play when we look at the issues of violence and vandalism during protests, even the use of struggle songs? Just very quickly as we wrap up. All right, um, good. So we must, the science just proves that the use of struggle songs that does not correlate into actual violence. Mm. What we have seen amongst our communities is that they would raise their issues um, within the proper systems. Like at local government, they would go to council or what meetings, speak to the what committee, um, speak to the what councillor. So those are peaceful means using the democratic systems or instruments to raise frustration. They are not listened to. Then they would become protests and those protests then still they are not listening to peaceful protests and they become confrontational and then from confrontational they become militant where there is destruction of infrastructure just to get the attention of the powers that be so it is um it would be unfair to say all protests that of milit in, in a militant manner or in a confrontational manner so that's why i go back to the initial point in my opening remark that we need responsible and responsive leaders that even when a community submits a memorandum when a community submits okay. a petition as instruments that are provided by our democrats that should be processed and processed mm. with speed and accordingly to the satisfaction of those that have made such a submission but because we have irresponsible and unresponsive individuals that okay. does not happen provoking protests so this protest can be mitigated in the mm. short run and long run Bongani, there's obviously plenty more questions that come on the back of what you'd echoed i'm going to leave the conversation there for now thank you for your time with us on the acbc Thank you for weighing in. Bogani, um, my language is political, political analyst. I'm speaking about the culture of protests in South Africa.